Again, let me wish each mother a very blessed, happy Mother's Day. Take my hat off by Ness. She did a great job with the four kids. At times, they were just her and the kids. I was pastoring the church down south, and I had to supplement our income. The first church was $75 a week, so you try to raise four kids on $75 a week. Uh, you know what I mean? But God didn't call me into money. He called me into uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God gave me a job. I wasn't lazy. He gave me a job with times picking up newspaper in New Orleans. I did that for 14 years. So a lot of times down there at home by herself. I worked at night with Picky Hume and I worked at day at the church. And I worked at the church, by the way. It wasn't just a title. Um, I was very serious when God gave me a vision about what He wanted me to do. And I have a testimony tonight. But anyway, what I want to talk about this morning, and I want to thank each one of you mothers for being a mother. My mama was a mother, and she loved me. We were poor, very poor, poorer than poor. We didn't know it until somebody told us. But we were happy. Mama took care of us, and Dad, and we were the family. We did help. Well, thank y'all. Mama, so I really, I just love you. I just love you to death. I have highest respect for you, too. Highest respect. Very much so respect. Maybe more respect than a lot of Y'all might, might know or understand, but I love each one of y'all in the name of Jesus. But I want to talk about something, not my mother's. Y'all know who you are, and what you've done, and what you're doing. But I want to talk about the story of Lot in the Old Testament, Lot and Abram. It's a story of two men, two decisions, and two results. And I think we have to be careful with our decisions. It, it, it sounds spiritual, and it might be spiritual. It might be what God has told a group of people to do, but God hasn't told you to do it. So you have to be careful with your decisions. you got to hear from God and let God lead you the way God wants you to go. Amen? Amen. I know I have not deviated for the last 35 years. God has told us what to do, and, that, and that's what we're doing. And I thank each one of y'all for helping support what we're doing here. So Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. I'm excited what God is doing. I'm excited. I'm excited when people's lives are put back together. I'm excited when people can be all that God wants them to be. God didn't create us to be, uh, to be beat up and all. God didn't create us to be losers. God created us to be victorious because we have the Spirit of God living within us. And we have, the, we have the power to exercise the power that God has given to each one of us. So I say amen. amen. But Genesis chapter 12 says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was 70, <coughs> 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substances that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. The life of Lot begins with Abram. Lot was blessed as was Abram. The end of both lives, though, was completely different. And we want to take a look at that this morning for just a little bit. I'm not going to labor. We're going to let the Lord have it. Lot followed after a man of God. In chapter 13 of Genesis Chapter 13, 1 says, And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all he had, and Lot with him, and to the south. Lot followed the man of God. Abram did what God told him to do. How can you tell if a man is a man of God while a woman is a woman of God? By them being attentive to the Holy Spirit. 
by praying and seeking the face of the Lord and following what the Lord has revealed to them according to the Word. Amen? It's got to be in the Word. And uh, my testimony, the Spirit of God speaks to me, and I'm going to share that tonight. What took place? What took place as God gave me, it, it woke me up early Saturday morning and told me what to do, and I'm going to share that with y'all tonight. But Abram did what God told him to do. Abram heard from God. God spoke to Abram. Abram heard and Abram responded. Abram could have said, oh, I ain't got time for all this. I got my family here. My, we just having a great time. We have meetings and we just have supper and fellowship. I'm not going to leave. But God says, I want you to leave. And it was for a reason. And we're a part of that reason right now. You and I are part of that reason. Because if y'all got me, y'all understand what we're saying here? Sure. We've got to hear from God, but we've got to make sure it's God speaking. It can sound good. It could be good. But we've got to respond to the way God is calling us to do what God wants us to do in order to advance the kingdom. It's all about bringing people to me. It's all about bringing people into the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, introducing Jesus Christ to people, but introducing Him to them in a loving way that God wants us to share. Each one of us are different, and each one of us needs to be uh, be approached differently as the Holy Spirit leads. You, you pay attention to God and attentive to God, and God's going to reveal to you. Anyone you come across, God is going to reveal to you how to speak to that person. Can I have an amen? amen? And that's very important. Hey, that's very important. Abraham left his home. He left his homeland. Me and I this. We, 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 when we have moved from one place to the other, we don't go back. Because God is finished where we was, and now God wants us where we are. And as long as God has us where He wants us to be, we're not finished with what God has called us to do. Amen? So, Abraham left his homeland. Abraham, uh, Abram, I'm sorry, Abraham didn't, Abram didn't become Abraham until a little later. But Abram was completely dedicated to following God. Completely dedicated. You don't have, let me tell you, share something with you. One thing me and I is, is never did. We never allowed money to stop us from going where God wanted us to go. Because number one, if God calls you, He's going to supply. If somebody else is supplying, it maybe you need to worship someone else, but I worship God. Amen. And we left, we left, we left, we left, and we left, and we went to Lee Valley. And we went because God called us there. And that church went from about, what, 14 people to 250 when we left. People were being healed right and left. But the more people that were being healed, more people were getting mad. Amen. So, so God said, okay, it's time to come on. It's time to move out. So we did. We moved out. Amen. And I'm, I'm thankful for God. I'm having a great time. Praising the Lord with so many great people here. God has just blessed us with so many great people. And I love our worship and praise. I just love it. But in return, Abram received all that God had for him and all that God had in store for him. I want to share something with each one of y'all right now. God has got so much for you right now. Right now. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. I don't care what situation you might find yourself in. God has got so much for you. Can y'all receive it right now? God, God just wants to pour it out right now. And I believe it. And I, I'm receiving some of that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, but now, Abram, let's, let's get this now. Abram received all that God had for him. And all those who was with him, who were with him, that is all those who followed him, the blessings of God followed through Abram because of his complete obedience to God. His complete obedience to God. Amen? And that's the key right there. His complete obedience to God. Amen. And in return, Lot received part of what God gave to Abram. We're going to talk about that for a couple minutes in just a little bit. Follow a man of God and God's blessings will pour out and spill on you. And I know many of y'all are just being blessed beyond measure. And that's good stuff. We also see that God was worshipped. Verse 4, 13, chapter 13, verse 4. And unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. We need to remember what God has done for us. And we need to keep repeating it to ourselves. And we need to keep sharing it. 
Some of y'all don't know this, but we're building a new church down south, and I fell approximately 13 to 16 foot to the slab of the church. The slab, I hit it, pow! And, and I was stoved up, had a, just a hairline crack about like that, just a hairline crack. God caught me. And God caught me. And I might as well share something with y'all. Maybe this is the first time some of y'all have heard it. This church hasn't. I said right then, I said, God, if it wouldn't be for you, you caught me. I should be dead. I should be brain dead. My dad should be pushing me in a wheelchair. I should have bolts and nuts and whatever I threw out my body. I said, God, there's nothing wrong with me. In fact, two weeks later, I was carrying me and the chairman of Deacon was carrying eight foot pews into the new church. And I said, God, you did this, and I will not follow man. I'm going to follow you because nobody else could have caught me. Right now, I am totally sold out. I am totally dedicated to you. Now, what do you want me to do? Here I am. And here Amen. I am. Amen. I've known people that fell off a, a two foot off the ground. And they broke their pelt, whatever they call that little tail ball and everything else, that they had screws and metal. And over here, I fell 16 foot, and God caught me. Y'all understand? That's God. God got a reason and a purpose for each one of your lives. God didn't create you to be worked over. God didn't create you to bow down to anything but to Him. God created you for a reason and a purpose. And when we are obedient and totally obedient to God, God is going to bring it through, not because of us, not because of anybody else, but because of the Holy Ghost living in you. I'll tell you what, we got victory in the name of Jesus. And if those demons start getting back in here, you know, separated. 
Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 and 9 reads, And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and my herdmen, for we are brethren. <clears throat> if not the whole land before thee, separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right, then I will go to the left. You see, God was speaking to Abraham. Abram. Ab Abram's wisdom was in God's sight. And it's not that Lot separated from the man of God because of, but Lot separated because the land couldn't keep both of them. They were so prosperous and they had so much livestock that the, the land wouldn't support their, their cattle or whatever they had. So a choice was made. Abraham said this, Lot, I'm going to give you first choice. Where, where do you want to go? You go to the left, I go to the right. You go to the right, I go to the left. So there was no victory there. But a choice had to be made. Lot was given first choice. He didn't make a bad choice. He, he didn't make a bad choice. But rather he allowed his choice to bring him where he didn't want to be. Y'all got what I'm saying now. He made a choice. But rather, let me say it again, he allowed his choice to bring him where he didn't want to be, nor where he should be. Abram received God's promise. Lot made his choice, like I said. And I want to say it again. His choice was not to say a wrong choice. And that's very important. We're not saying that his choice was wrong. But what Lot did with his choice <coughs> made all the difference. What Lot did with his choice made all the difference. Y'all got what I'm saying? We got to be in tune with God. We got to hear from God. And you're not going to hear from God if you're not in tune with God. You got to be on your faith. You got to spend time with God. You need to be in prayer. You need to be seeking God's face. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, God? But what Lot did with his choice made all the differences. Sometimes we're faced with choices too. I'm not saying it's bad choices, but we're faced with choices. And we need to be on our face seeking God. Seeking God in order to make not only the right choice, but the proper choice. Thank you. I am getting full dry. Thank you. My sister, thank you. See, I'm blessed, isn't it? Oh, it's cold. I wouldn't want to take a bath of that. <laughs> when I was in the army, we did go. But anyway, I'm not in the army. Amen. We got a hot army. We're not on some hill in Germany. Praise God. Amen. But what he did with his choice made all the difference. Lot was separated from God's blessings. The blessing was on Abram. As long as Lot was with Abram, let's say it was raining. And Lot and Abram was together when it rained on Abram, it might rain on Lot. But now when Lot separated because of prosperity, it was raining on Abram, but Lot was no longer with Abram. Lot was over here, so the rain wasn't on Lot. Y'all got what I'm saying? We need to be where God is worshipped, where God is praised, Amen. where the Holy Spirit Amen. is given the freedom to touch hearts. Amen. 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 And that's what I love about this. God's love was still with Lot. Still with Lot. But listen to this. Lot allowed the influence of the city to override his influence. Mm -hmm. I say this. You surround yourself with godly people, you get godly blessings. You surround yourself with ungodly people in a process of time, you will get ungodly blessings. In other words, you'll get something you don't want. Amen? Amen. So, Lot allowed the influence of the city to override his influence. This is what happens when one is not around godly people. Lot's influence should have been strong in God. Lot did not change Lot did not change his beliefs. 
But Lot also didn't change the city standards neither. Lot didn't give in to the city standards, but Lot didn't change the city standards. You might say, well, preacher, how can we change the standards? By living a godly life. Amen. By not being influenced by the ungodly. Amen. But loving them, but not being influenced. Amen. I don't want to be influenced by the ungodly. Amen. Because what the ungodly has, I don't have, I don't want. That's right. I don't want it. They can have all the money or whatever else. I don't want it. I want what God brings in. I want what God gives. Amen. Amen? Y'all with me on that? But we need to make an influence. Where me and Vicky goes, anybody else goes, we, we do have an influence. Yesterday was an awesome time. I've never seen it. This past week was one of the greatest opportunities that we've had. It's almost like me and Vicky was a magnet. And people were just coming to us for prayer. Amen? We need for people to see God in us. And Brother Robert and Brother Jerry is doing the same thing. But we need to let people see God in us. How do we do that? By not trying to show people we have God in us, but, around, uh, but rather allowing God to dwell within us and God will reveal Himself to others and not us. That's the big difference. Big difference. But anyway... Lot allowed the influence of the city to override his influence. And I'll share that in just a second. Lot's influence should have been strong and gone. I'll put it to you like this. Lot did not join the moral behavior of that city. But well, that was a bad city. That was bad. And God destroyed it. We know that story too, don't we? But even though Lot did not join the immoral behavior of the city, Lot was still living in the city that had a strong influence on his family, had a strong influence on his wife, had a strong influence on his children. Even though he was there in authority, they say he sat at the gate, but that still he did not change, but rather they changed his family. I say, Father, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Don't allow the world to come in and have an influence on your family. Don't do it. Stop it. Stop it before it starts. Amen? Amen. Amen. But Lot lost all that he had. You see, he was with a man of God in prosperity. He separated from his man of God. And what happened? He lost everything he had. <clears throat> his son, son-in-laws followed not after him. Chapter 19, verse 14 reads, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Oh, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. He did not even have an influence on his son-in-law. The sin was so strong in that city that he had no influence on it. We need to be careful where we act. We need to be careful where we go. We need to go under the prayer of each one of us here. We need to believe in laying on of hand and asking God to put a protection around us as we go out into the world. Nick, I know what you, you're doing left by doing air conditioning work. When I first got up home, I was doing electrical work. I know what it's like to be around those people. And you gotta be careful because they can draw you in you got to be awful careful, but you got to be strong. Because God has got so much for you, so don't be wavering. Don't allow that. Don't wave into anything. Stay strong to God, and Amen. God is going to bless you and never like you have been blessed before. Amen. And I believe that. I believe it. But stay strong in the Lord. Stay strong. I've been there. You know, I, I, I've lived it. I've lived it. And look, I, I, I don't want to go back. You know, but I, I know I, I've been there. I say this, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to cast all that stuff aside. And I'm going to pick up the banner of Christ Jesus and walk after Him. Because that's where the blessings are going to come. Now, Lot lost everything. Remember his wife? He was told, they told his wife, don't look back. They said, don't look back. But that pull and that influence of that type of lifestyle was so strong that she couldn't even walk away. And when she turned around, what happened to her? She became a pillar of salt. A pillar of salt. 
You see, she lost everything because of the influence that that city had on her. Don't allow the ungodly to have an influence on you. But rather say, God, no matter what, I'm going to stay strong in you. I'm going to stay strong in you. I'm going to walk after you, Lord. Now you can have an influence upon others. We need to be that bright light. We need to be that bright light when we talk to unbelievers so they can see something. See something in us. And what is in us is what? The Holy Ghost. <coughs> the Holy Spirit. So, mamas, praise God. But what here we see right here, we see two men, two decisions, and we see two results. I want to be over the influence of God. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. Just bless each one here today. Especially bless the mamas and those that's going to be mamas. And Lord, we just want to praise you for the day. And we lift your name up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.